Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I've been talking about low birth rate for quite some time. There are many countries on this planet that cannot sustain a population having a lot of babies. America is one of those places. And not to mention, you are noticing the changes. There are less white children in America. There are, for the first time, less white people entering the workforce this year between the 18 and 25 year olds. And I did an article on that. So those changes are noticeable, very noticeable now. So they can't hide this stuff or not talk about it. You know, these countries around the globe are concerned. They know the low birth rate means a lot of economic problems ahead. You got less people working, less people pouring money into the economy, less consumers on the earth buying goods. It's going to impact everything. Everything. There are some governments that will not be able to exist anymore. They're going to have to either merge in with other countries or just fall all together. But a lot of these places will not be existing as we lead into the future. That's reality. And it goes right back to what I said on my podcast. You know, it, it, when you look at the biblical text, Gentiles were never promised ever. And they, they certainly were not promised everlasting rulership on the planet. All of that's going to be gone. All of it. This world that you are looking at now is not the one that you're going to see leading into the future. It's going to be a very different world. And the people that are trying to choke us out in order to stay in power, they're not going to have any power at all. And they know it. That's why they're acting out and, and trying to be phone deputies out here in public. That's why they're doing all that stuff. They know what's coming. And they know it's stopped. And it won't be stopped. So this came out in Bloomberg Business Week. The global fertility crash. It's here. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, we are at a time when the baby boomers are actually the oldest group on the planet. And after they are gone, all of the smaller generations follow. Economically, a lot of things are gonna change once the baby boomers are damn near gone. You're gonna feel the effects globally. And, you know, already in America, every damn thing is overpriced. And overpricing everything leading into the future is going to be counterproductive if you don't have the population that is going to be out here consuming in a big way. And they certainly won't have it at this rate. As birth rates fall, countries will be forced to adapt or fall behind. Ladies and gentlemen, each generation need to have at least two children in order to have a stable population in the country. And we know that's not happen, happening. Um, there are more childless women on this planet than ever seen before. In fact, the childless women on the planet is historic. It is so much of it where generations before you did not see that. So in the 1960s, there were five live births per woman. And if you remember back in the day, people had larger families. It's not unusual for many of you because in my case, my parents, my mother um, came from a family that had 10 children. My father came from a family that had nine. 
So it was very common for people to have large families back then. You know, a lot of times those children would grow up and they would have to work and also bring an income home to help the family survive. So the fertility rate, which went from five live births per woman, it, by 2017, it was at 2.43 births per woman. So because it was close to the 2.1, that was considered critical at that point. Well, we are below that. We're below the 2.1 in America, as well as multiple places around the world, including South America. Now, they don't talk much about South America, but South America and even on those islands, there are certain islands like Puerto Rico, they were going through a low birth rate, you know, but because of the people that ruled the planet, you're not going to hear about the places except for China, Europe, America, North America. You, you know, you're going to hear about that. But all of the other places are experiencing, you know, they're having low birth rate, but you're just not hearing about it because those are not real powerful, you know, rulership Europeanized countries. So ladies and gentlemen, the world there, according to the UN, is, is, is expected to reach its peak by 2100, 3 billion people. And they say they are saying from that point on, it's going to be a pretty rapid decline. Um, falling fertility rates and aging population mean serious challenges that will be felt more acutely in some places than others. While the global average fertility rates is still above the rate of replacement, technically 2.1 children per woman. In 2017, about half of all countries had already fallen below it. Up from one in 20, just a half a century ago, for places such as the US and parts of Western Europe, which historically are attractive to migrants, loosen immigration policies uh, could make up for birth rates. It won't. It won't. It's not going to make up for it, y'all. They've already tried it in Europe. Europe has been bringing in immigrants and their low birth rates was really out there back in the 80s. They were talking a lot about their low birth rates in Europe then. And they've been bringing in immigrants and now they are almost collapsing when it comes down to their birth rate and having immigrants in the country did not make a difference at all. Immigration is not the answer. I'm just telling you. It, it, you all you got to do is look at Europe who had immigration now for decades and they are still falling apart when it comes down to the birth rate. Not the answer. Okay, so um, in other places, uh, drastic policies. So what they're doing is trying to, um, for one, put more burden on women to have children, which they're not going to do because it's really your fault. The generations before it's your fault to why these women aren't having children. You told them to put a career first. That's what you did. You told them to focus on education and a career. You did not uphold the family first. So they're doing exactly what you said. I don't know why you would be angry with them for not having children. This is the propaganda that was pushed not only here, but in other places around the globe. Oh, get a career. Oh, oh, get your education. Oh, you know, career, build your career. You, you push that. You didn't push family. But these folks are the ones with high IQs, y'all. They're the ones with the high IQs. Okay, so... Um, so now you see them like here in America changing abortion laws and trying to um, force these women into a situation where they got to have a child, you know, a, a child or a few children. Hey, even if it's rape, even if it's incest, even if it's this, that you have the baby. These women aren't going to go for that. And you see, they're not going for it. They're not. All they're going to do is when you put those tough, 
abortion laws and it's going to cross state lines and go for abortions elsewhere. Other states are not going to deny them. Counterproductive. Each of the following indicators tell a uh, part of the globe fertility story, not just how many babies women have on average, but also how well women are integrated into the workforce, what slice of income pie they receive, and their level of educational attainment overall, exactly. So globally, they're saying the average is 2.4 live births each. China is below that. Okay, there. So is France. Saudi is probably going to be there eventually. They're not quite there. And Nigeria on the low end because they tend to have more babies in Africa. So they are like around a little over five children per woman. And then the women earnings in the country. So you can see on the chart, 53% um, of women are in the workforce. Um, most women are literate, but some countries have rates below 50%. Okay. So governments are now making all kinds of attempts to pay women uh, more money while they're on maternity leave. They're also offering more time off, which they should have done in the beginning. I'm telling you, whoever came up with these family policies, it definitely was not a woman. Okay, have the baby. Six weeks, get back to work. Get back to work. Six weeks late, get back to work. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is not good policy. And, and, and with those kind of policies, who would want to have a baby? You know, but these folks are so heartless and so just cold. And these are the people that are running things, y'all. Cold, callous people, heartless. And their policies are heartless. So now you got these governments and China has now relaxed their one child rule. They waited way too long. They did it for 40 years, y'all. 40 years of one child. Now they done screwed up their population. They are spiraling into an uncontrollable low birth rate now. Even changing the policies, there are way fewer females in China than there are males. How do you make up for a population when you don't even have enough females in your population? How do you do it? You can't. You can't. And, and to this day, the Chinese people sneak off and get abortions if they find out they got a girl. Although they're, they've are they banned that kind of stuff, they go underground and still get it done. They said they're still getting that mess done left and right. If you want to know what country has the highest abortion rate, it's China. It's definitely China. All right, so um, now these countries are... Uh, they have a sense of urgency and even desperation is creeping into the search for ways to reverse the current trend. It can't be reversed. Can't be reversed, y'all. That said, achieving robust population growth is by no means the only contributor to economic growth. In some countries, too high fertility may actually be a drag. No, don't don't fall for that. What they're doing is trying to point to Africa. Oh, we may be struggling to have kids, but it's bad if you have too many kids. That's all. It's, it's psychological warfare. That's all that is. Don't even pay it any mind. It's psychological warfare. They can't have kids. So now they're trying to twist the narrative and say, you having too much kid, too many kids, you dark people, too many kids. That's a bad thing. No, it isn't. It's psychological warfare. Don't fall for it. To explore these demographic and economic shifts, Bloomberg analyzed fertility data for 200 countries and picked four that were outliers in some respect. Then interviewed one woman in each place about her economic and cultural forces that shaped her choice to have children or not. France, as you can see, as of the 60s, they were 
at a birth rate of 2.9 and 2017, 9.1. So they are well below the replacement rate. And believe me, they're lower than that now in 2019. So what they are saying is pretty much that the women, since they obtained rights back in 1945 in France, they are now getting closer to getting the same kind of income and education that men have. So, you know, in places like France, they have better uh, daycares than they do here. And, you know, they do a lot better, you know, with their family policies than they do here in America. But despite all of that, they still have a low birth rate. You know, all of, given these people perks, is not going to change the fertility rate. So as you can see, women earnings in France are 72% of men's. 99% of French women are literate. So there are more literate women in France than men. All right. Okay. All right. So this is one of the women they interviewed. When I became pregnant with my first child, I had already done a job interview for a new post. So I had to tell my future employer that I'd arrive four months later than planned, but it didn't set me back. For my second child, I had applied for uh, post managing a bigger team. I told my employer, but they said they didn't affect, it didn't affect their decision. And for the third, nobody said anything either when I told them. Having children forces you to be more efficient. Before having children, I would often stay late in the evenings. I found that when you manage a team, being a boss that doesn't stay too late removes some pressure from people. It's a routine that is quite healthy for everyone. Okay, so this is somebody that was able to have children and her jobs did not turn her away because when she applied for those jobs, she was pregnant. That would be different in America. That would be different. The attitudes are so different over here. They really are. But in France, that's a whole different story. All right. So that was one interview. Here's Saudi Arabia. Wow. What a difference. So in 1960, Saudi Arabia had 7.2 children per woman. In 2017, they're down to 2.4. Oh, yeah, they're getting close to that one, um, 2.1. They'll probably be below that in the next few years. All right, so women in the culturally restrictive oil-rich kingdom have among the world's lowest of the labor force. So there's not quite as many women in the labor force in this type of country, which I'm not shocked. And wield little economic power, you know, very insecure men will tend to do that. As the country has gotten richer of phenomena that trends to lead to longer life expectancies and smaller families, the fertility rate has dipped down close to the rate of replacement. Wow, that is a big difference. 7.2 in 1960, 2.4. That is a huge difference. 25% of Saudi women are in the workforce. Women's earnings in Saudi Arabia are 22% of men. Yeah, the men there will never let those women make more money. Are you kidding me? Woo, that ain't gonna happen. In other societies, husbands may take on roles that help the wife not to be a full-time or caretaker, like helping out when she's out of work. I don't want to be unfair to everyone. There may be exceptions, 
but in general, it's not the case in Saudi Arabia. I am not married. It is not an easy decision to take, not at all. Motherhood is a beautiful thing. I have moments where I wish I had a baby I could hold and play with, but I want to make and build my own family under my conditions. I wanted to choose my husband myself out of love. When I was at an appropriate age for marriage, this option was not available. Some people said things like lumda, lumna, um, is not beautiful enough, which is why she's saying no, or she's not good enough. And she says no, she won't be embarrassed. So you know, with them, the, the culture is totally different from in many places there. So this is her right there. All right. China. Now China jacked themselves up. All right. So in the 1960s, China was at 5.8 per woman. That's how many children there were per woman. They pushed that one child rule and now they are at a 1.7 struggling to turn this whole thing around, but there is no turning it around if you don't have enough women for the men to marry in the country. You just don't. I mean, they really ruined themselves. Decades of limits on family size and a culture of women working have led to a steep decline in China's fertility rate. A recent crackdown on gender discrimination forbids employers from asking female applicants marital or paternity status, a step towards keeping women in jobs as the population ages. So women in China have an average of 1.7 live births, which we know is well below the replacement rate. 69% of Chinese women are in the workforce. And this is the labor force participation rate for women ages 15 to 64. Summer Gwen. All right. Hmm. 34-year-old working for a startup tech company as the head of the marketing team. When I found out I was pregnant, it came to me as a surprise. And my first thought was, what about my job? Before the baby, I was a typical career woman working late hours, leading a team, tackling difficult issues, and always delivered, delivering at work. Shortly after leaving, the doctor, I sent a group message to the company CEO and vice president, who are both female, telling them honestly about this. They congratulated me, but one day later, the CEO told me to go on a business trip for several days. I raised the concern that my physical condition may not be fit for traveling long hours, but the CEO said overcome it. The first day back from the trip, I found the company put out a recruitment notice online with the same title and job description as mine. So they were replacing her. And, you know, a lot of that goes on in America. And I know, um, in fact, I had a friend in the past that had a job. They loved her. They said she did good work, loved her. And she announced her pregnancy in the office. Do you know they all turned on her? They all turned on her when she told them she was pregnant. So what happened was shortly after she had the baby, she went back for a brief period of time, but she quit and ended up finding another job. They do stuff like that in America. They will do it in a heartbeat. So... <clears throat> I'm not surprised that happened. So my health was unstable during my pregnancy. So I applied for sick leave. The company agreed. And then the human resources supervisor asked me to submit previous medical records for sick leaves, including those 
that I already took. I didn't keep the records as that was the first time they brought up such demands. A day later, they sent an email informing me they would suspend my salary because I failed to provide the required documents. Wow. By that time, I was roughly three months pregnant. I, it, it was so hard to believe a company that I worked for so diligently for uh, would treat me this way. So I filed an arbitration suit seeking compensation for my overtime work since joining the company. Right after that, the company shut me out, suspending my work, email, removing me from a work communication group, but they never dismissed me officially. By the time I wanted to quit the job, human resources refused to proceed unless I agreed not to claim any fees or hurt the company's reputation. I refused, so they wouldn't let me take my belongings and refuse to issue a resignation certificate, a required document in China's job market. I became one of the first people to act on China's new anti-employment discrimination measures and filed a lawsuit against my previous company. I see women are helpless when facing workplace discrimination. With the new rules, women's rights can be upheld. It also sent a signal to the companies not to enfranchise female employee rights. So, you know, China wants these women to have more babies, but when they try to have a baby, the companies are still punishing them for it. The whole incident has taken toll on my personal life. I was a confident career woman and financially independent too, but now my confidence has been chipped away. I suffer from postpartum depression, and sometimes I woke up in the middle of the night crying, blaming myself for not taking good care of my child. And I, and the regret will accompany me for my entire life. Wow, I don't understand that. Okay, so Nigeria. Nigeria is still well above the replacement rate. In 1960, 6.4 uh, children per women in Nigeria. In 2017, 5.5 children per woman. That's still very high when you look at it in comparison to other countries, but it is Africa. With their high fertility rates, Nigeria and its sub-Saharan neighbors are expected to contribute much of the world's net population gain over the coming decades. Feeding, educating, and employing these growing numbers will be difficult, but a gender and equal opportunity bill has been has been stalled in the Nigerian Senate since it was introduced in 2010. So women in Nigeria have an average of 5.5 live births. 41% of Nigerian women are literate. So this is Lagos. Um, okay, so it is. Abo Sidi George Organ. My dad was in the Air Force. My mom was a teacher. As a matter of fact, my mom didn't just work, she had every type of business you can have. Apart from her job, my mom sold ice blocks in the house. She sold popcorn, she had a salon, she had a garment making fashion design place. Your mom had many talents, that's why. You know, we come with multiple talents. She had a computer business at some point. She used to travel to China, Dubai, and Senegal to buy stuff. Of course, daddy works because he wears a uniform every day and goes out. But I remember thinking, oh my gosh, mom, must be so rich because she does all these things. She is selling this, you know. I got married at 31, graduated from university at 20, 
because, you know, these Africans are way smarter than these Western students, despite the fact that they run around and say they got high IQs. These that That's why they're running to Africans to get their uh, essays done. <laughs> I wonder why they're not running to anybody in Europe. Y'all ever think about that? They're running to people in Africa to get it done because you know, they're smarter and they know it. Deep down inside, they know it. So for 11 years, somebody was asking every day, what is going on? Something must be wrong if you're not married at a certain age. You know, people worry about fertility. The clock is ticking is a popular term that you hear around here. And there is economic side to it. People feel, especially if you're focused on your career and you're thriving, are you going to buy yourself the house and the car and the, you know, lifestyle? What will your husband do? My mom got married young and I definitely think it was her expectation for her girls. Nice. Okay. You would definitely have low moments. It gets to a point where, for example, if you were a person who used to go to the club, you didn't fit in there anymore. And then you start to say, where do I fit in? Where am I going to meet this person? So I'd be going outside of my normal comfort zone. By the time I got married, it was my decision. Yes, I was conscious of the fact that I was getting older, but it wasn't as a result of pressure or urgency. Always wanted to have kids, no question. To be honest, now I wouldn't change anything. Maybe the days where I felt like, really, why am I not married? I feel like there is some good in getting married and uh, uh, some good in getting married a little later, what our society calls late, because you are very clear about what marriage is. I feel like really and truly, if you were single for 10 years, you would accelerate your career to a point where when you got married, there's no stopping you anymore. Interesting. The big picture. Population dynamics can't be ignored, but they're also not economic destiny. A study last year by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development found that for most major economies, rising productivity was a more important driver of gross domestic product growth between 2000 and 2017 on average than population growth or change in the employment rate. More than 90% of China's potential growth in 2017 came from productivity increases. The most of any country and a few rungs ahead of the US for Saudi Arabia, however, 62% came from population growth alone. And Nigeria was even more reliant than the uh, Arab kingdom on a sheer size of its potential labor and consumer pool. You know, let me just say that at the end. Uh, France stand out for balancing increased productivity and population with higher employment, likely boosted by a healthy influx of working age immigrants and its generous labor benefits. Population is just one of three factors influencing national economies. So you can see employment rates, all right, drags, no effect, and contributes. Wow. Look at Nigeria there in the dark green. labor productivity. Yeah, a lot of this is going to change, y'all, because we, we're in that time where everything is changing. It really is. 
Productivity gains can make up some of the gaps as populations taper off and begin to shrink. But it's much more challenging way to grow an economy and may not be sustainable over time. It won't. It won't. I can tell you this American economy won't be sustainable because every damn thing is overpriced. It will not be sustainable with a less population and everything out here overpriced. It's not going to work. Everything is going to implode. Okay. Um, for most of the countries in the OECD's study, the relative contribution of productivity to growth has fallen over time. Ultimately, no country will be left untouched by demographic decline. Governments will have to think creatively about ways to manage population, whether through state-sponsored benefits or family planning edicts or discrimination protections, or else find their own path to sustainable economic growth with ever um, fewer native born workers, consumers, and entrepreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. They are not going to be able to avoid hiring more what they call minorities. We're not the minorities, but this is what they try to call us. They're not going to be able to avoid that. And let me tell you another thing they're not going to be able to avoid doing because of uh, such a shortage in the workforce, they're not going to be turning these people getting out of jail away like they do now. You're going to see that change dramatically as we lead into the future and there are less people in the workforce, especially coming from the white community, just like we're seeing already. We, you know, this year is the first time new people entering the workforce were non-white and as that starts happening um, even more prevalently over the next decade, they're going to have to grab these people that they turned away at one point in time and employ them, especially in order to keep their companies going. They're no longer going to have the luxury to look across the table and say, I'm not hiring. I want somebody that look like me to have this job. They're not going to be in a position to do that any longer. You wait and see. I know what I'm talking about. This is all going to change. It's going to have to change. They're not going to be in a position to keep it from changing. And as the economy shrink, people are going to be treated differently too. You watch. Everything is going to turn around. All this discrimination that you're looking at now, that's going to have to change. It, this population change is going to force their hand into making those changes. They're not going to have a choice. It's going to be less people that look like them coming in to apply for these jobs. And, and this map is interactive, which I think is pretty cool. So anyway, um, as you see, Niger has eight Live births per woman. Niger. Amazing, right? Somalia, seven live births per woman. Angola, six live births per woman. You see this? All African nations. But see, when you come down here, Panama, they have just a little above three births per woman. All right, Philippines about three, I mean, a below three. All right, Philippines, Venezuela, oh, they're probably about at the 2.1 mark. Mexico, yeah, you know, they have low birth rate in Mexico too. They do. United Kingdom, um, United States, which we know is below. United States, I believe, is like at a 1.7, somewhere around there, 1.8. Romania. So as you get to the bottom, you don't see nothing but European. Puerto Rico, like I said, they were going through low birth rate in Puerto Rico. So you see all of these places. 
It gets more European as you go down. Yeah, Puerto Rico right there. Man, they were well below. They're like a one child per woman in Puerto Rico as of 2017. And South Korea is probably the lowest on the planet. They're not even at a one. So things are changing, y'all. Things are changing. They're going to have to change on this earth in order for us to move into the future. What you're looking at now, I said this before, and I will continue to say this. This is not the future. These are not the people that are going to lead us to the next level on this planet. You know, they are the past. This is why they still do the things that come out of the past. Racial discrimination, preferential treatment, and all that stuff. That stuff is of the past. And these folks are still trying to carry that shit out. They are not the future. They are showing you what they're going to do if they are still leading in the future. They're not going to do nothing but more of the same. And we don't need more of the same. We need to move and, and take this planet to new levels. And that cannot be done with the people that you see in place. All they're trying to do is hoard all the resources and keep everybody else from having it. Th that's not the future of the earth. We don't need selfish people leading into the future. These people, the more selfish they become, the more obsolete they're going to become. Already damn obsolete now. But y'all, please tell me what you think about the global fertility crash that's going on. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.